Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued decrees 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 for the year 2017. Decree 10 stipulates appointing Colonel Abdullah Hamad Al Kuwaisi as the Director General of Customs Clearance and Inspection Directorate, and Sheikh Turki bin Daij Al Khalifa as Director General of Planning and Administrative Affairs Directorate. Decree 11 stipulates reappointing Ali Abdul Hussein Al Asfour as Governor of the Northern Governorate for a four-year term. Decree 12 stipulated appointing Dr. Maryam Ibrahim Al-Ahrmazi Al-Hajri as Assistant Undersecretary for Primary and Public Health Care in the Ministry of Health. Decree 13 stipulated appointing Sheikh Aisha bint Ali Al-Khalifa as Assistant Undersecretary for Social Welfare and Rehabilitation in the Ministry of Labor and Social Development. Decree 14 stipulated appointing Hisham Ibrahim al ghatam as Assistant Undersecretary for Human and Financial Resources in the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments. Decree 15 stipulated the restructuring Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, which is presided over by the President of Bahrain Authority of Culture and Antiquities. It will be in charge of, first, Directorate of Human and Financial Resources, Second, the General Director for Antiquities in the rank of Assistant Undersecretary in charge of three directorates, the Directorate of Antiquities and Museums, the Directorate of National Heritage, and the Directorate of Maintenance and Services. Third, the Director General of Culture and Arts in the rank of Assistant Undersecretary in charge of three directorates. First, the Directorate of Antiquities and Arts, the, the Directorate of National Theatre, and the Directorate of Business and Promotion. Decree 27 of 2013 regarding the restructuring of the Ministry of Culture has been cancelled. His Royal Highness Deputy King and Crown Prince, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, held today his weekly majlis at Rafah Palace. Members of the Royal Family, senior government officials, members of the Shura Council and Council of Representatives, members of municipal councils, religious and community leaders, journalists and diplomats attended the majlis. His, His Royal Highness welcomed the broad range of visitors at the weekly majlis, which demonstrates Bahrain's commitment to rooted traditions and values that are underpinned by His Majesty's aspirations to maintain a strong bond amongst Bahrain society. Jimez's visitors extended their ex appreciation and gratitude to His Royal Highness for hosting the majlis and emphasized the important role he plays in advancing sustainable development to guarantee prosperity and opportunity for the people of Bahrain. Representative of His Majesty the King for Charity, Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa extended his congratulations to Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King, and President of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, on the occasion of being honored with the Arab Women Medal from Arab, the Arab League. He highlighted Her Royal Highness's outstanding efforts, which resulted in declaring Manama as the capital of the Arab woman 2017, adding that this honoring comes as an appreciation for Her Royal Highness's contributions to supporting Arab women. Sheikh Nasser praised Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika's role and contributions in favor of Arab women, her leadership of large projects and achievements that confirm Bahraini women's status in the Bahraini community under the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to support women empowerment programs in various sectors. Under the patronage of Bahrain Defense Force Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the awarding ceremony of the first place winning unit in combat and administration readiness evaluation program for 2016 coincided with the 49th anniversary of BDF establishment. The ceremony was held in the presence of Defense Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalahma and Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi. BDF's Undersecretary Major General Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, Director of Military Security Major General Hassan Mohammed Saad, Inspector General Major General Abdullah Hassan Al Naimi, and a number of senior BDF officers. The ceremony commenced with the recitation of verses from the Holy Quran, followed by a briefing of the Test and Evaluation Combat and Administration Readiness Program. 
presented by the Director of Joint Operations, Brigadier General Ghanem Ibrahim Al Fadala. The BDF uh, Commander in Chief uh, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa honored the winning units, which were the Royal Special Forces Unit and the uh, Technical Maintenance Unit. Subsequently, the flag of the Royal Special Forces Unit was raised. The BDF Commander in Chief praised the efforts put forth by the units as they exerted an outstanding level of readiness and excellent competence that made them gain these advanced results, which demonstrate the capacity and the effectiveness of the Bahrain Defense Force affiliates to carry out combat, administrative and training tasks, as well as their readiness to execute the duties entrusted to them under different circumstances. The BDF Commander-in-Chief also expressed thanks and appreciation to all BDF affiliates for upholding the national duty of protecting the country. He went on uh, to note that the BDF March has achieved numerous goals due to the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in addition to the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He continued to affirm that the BDF since the establishment in 1968 has has managed to carry out its entrusted tasks on the national and regional levels. He added that members of the BDF who undertake this national duty in different military posts are a source of pride, as their active contribution is evident in the efforts of preserving peace and security in the region, which includes the participation in Saudi Arabia's led coalition in restoring legitimacy in Yemen. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa patronized today the fourth edition of the Self Development Conference under the theme Creating Change. In the presence of a number of ministers, senior officials, and invitees from inside and outside of the kingdom, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah urged to set positive change tools as a general approach on the individual and community levels to achieve a sustainable and a comprehensive human development. He explained that despite the importance of change, caution is necessary to avoid its manipulation into a false slogan to implement agendas with no advantages to people and communities and which lead to chaos and disputes. He also hailed the voluntary and civil efforts of Bahrain Meditation Center for Self-Development and their contributions for the community to spread humanitarian and positive values. The president of the center's board of directors, Dr. Ibrahim al dosiri delivered a speech in which he commended the unlimited support of Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah for the conference since its launch in 2011, which affirms his keenness on developing the human element. The Interior Minister, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, received today the GCC Countries Customs President and Director Generals on the occasion of holding the 18th Joint GCC Customs Union meeting in the presence of the President of Customs, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Interior Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to the GCC Countries Customs President and Director Generals for their efforts in developing customs procedures through enhancing information and expertise. He hailed the role of the GCC customs in facilitating travel and trade procedures as well as enhancing customs security. He stressed the importance of continuous work to overcome all challenges through unifying efforts and stances. He also noted the Supreme Council's decision in its 38th edition regarding the transportation of trucks between member states and the result of the committee's meeting regarding the revision of the unified customs law. For their part, the GCC countries, customs presidents and director generals expressed thanks and appreciation to the interior minister for his wise directives commending the positive participation of Bahrain in the customs field. They also expressed gratitude for hospitality they received, wishing Bahrain further success and prosperity. The President of uh, Customs, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the 18th uh, Joint GCC uh, Customs Union meeting with the participation of the Customs Union uh, authorities, members, and the Economic and Development Affairs Under Secretary Khalifa bin Saeed Al Abari. And in the presence of representatives from all member states, Sheikh Ahmed highlighted the efforts of the previous heads of the delegations to develop customs procedures, expressing thanks and appreciation to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for its efforts and work. Between 
between the Gulf Cooperation Council's countries, the GCC. The heads of delegations reviewed the General Municipality's report on direct uh, automated conver conversions and agreed on adopting its guide directory. The Customs Union Authority recalled the GCC's approval of assigning some customs outlets as main outlets for the union. The meeting agreed on arranging a visit to Turkey to take a closer look at handling railroad customs cases. It also agreed on holding its 19th meeting in Riyadh. The 36th rounds of talks of the Arab Women Committee took place at Sofitel Hotel this week under the umbrella of the Arab State League and the Supreme Council for Women. Not only did they come to a number of work plans uh, to be executing during the time until the next conference, but they also granted Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa with a medal. Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa was bestowed with the highest honor from the Arab State League, the Arab Women's Medal, in recognition of her efforts in support of women's issues at the local and Arab level. We're here to uh, discuss the women's advancement and the agenda in the region and also prepare ourselves to the Commission on the Status of Women in March in New York and that is basically interested or dealing with the economic empowerment for women this year. Um, yesterday, Her Highness has received the highest decoration from the Arab League, which is the Arab League Medal. And it's only a small uh, recognition uh, um, for all her efforts, not only yesterday or the day before, but for generations and for decades, uh, advancing the rights of women um, and looking into the agenda of uh, justice and equality and equity with a lot of seriousness, with a lot of passion and uh, with a lot of dedication and perseverance as she herself, Her Highness herself, stated yesterday. This was not only uh, for Bahraini women but for Arab women and uh, in a couple of months we're taking that globally as uh, Her Highness will be launching a global award for women's empowerment uh, during the Commission of the States of Women in New York in March. The Arab region is facing a lot of challenges. These challenges do not only pertain to the need of food or shelter, but also the real-life need of security, especially to those weakened by the cruelty of the circumstances of either immigration due to war, abuse due to the marriage of minor girls, or even abuse from relatives because of some ancient tradition that is not only outdated, but prohibited and punishable by law in most countries. In Somalia, it's a country that just coming out civil war, uh, a country that has suffer, suffered for 25 years. And uh, um, we specifically, Somali women specifically, suffer uh, a long term of instability, um, a weak government, um, a government that cannot um, uh, support its, its society, its, its people especially when it comes to women and girls. Uh, one of our biggest challenge is um, women not have um, access to justice. And that's the basic life. Um, rape is the, the biggest challenge. Impunity is the biggest challenge. For us coming, participating this year's, um, the 36th section, session of Arab Women um, League, it's a very important. We coming back. Um, Somali government is trying right now very hard um, to fulfill its international obligations, but those should not be on a paper only. Those should be implemented. We, as a Somali government, have tr um, ratified a lot of um, international human rights, but again, um, imp imp implementing is very poor. Reporting for Bahrain International. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Mohamed Youssef. 
Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,310.04 points, marking a decrease of 0.21 points above last closing. The fall was in the commercial bank sector, and investors traded mainly in the same sector with 62% of total shares. 83 transactions included 2,740,180 shares worth 506,874 Bahraini dinars.